about circular motion in this class. Uh, the reason we want to talk about circular motion is because most of the uh, motions in the world or in our day-to-day -day life can be explained as a combination of a linear motion and a circular motion. So if a car is moving um, and we, if a car is moving, you know that it moves uh, not only in terms of distance but also the wheels are moving uh, in a circular way. Also, let's take an example. Let's say if you have some object in your hand, you throw it upward and in the same time you give it a rotation. Then you will see it actually it not only uh, performs a linear motion but it also performs a circular motion. So most of the motion in the in in, in our day to day life can be explained or um, uh, as a as a as a combination of a linear motion and a circular motion. So we'll talk about circular motion in this class. But before that, the, we need to understand few things. First of all, going back to our definition for acceleration. Acceleration is defined as change in a change in velocity divided by change in time. So if you are moving let's say at 10 meters per second and you press your gas pedal and you go up to 20 meters per second then let's say you do that in 2 seconds then acceleration is going to be 20 minus 10 divided by 2 all the time we are assuming that you are moving in just one direction so that gives us 5 meters per second square as the acceleration but that is not the only way you can have an acceleration by just putting uh, pressing the gas pedal because acceleration is a vector and vector is not just a number it also has a direction so you may be let's say moving like this at 10 meters per second and then you change your direction by simply taking a turn without pressing the gas pedal and it's still you actually um, um, accelerated. For example here, what is the resultant of these two vectors? This is the resultant. So the acceleration will be, let's say you did that in uh, two seconds. So your acceleration vector is going to be vector AC divided by 2. Uh, why vector AC? Because that is a change in velocity and change in time we assume 2 to be 2. And you can use, um, I mean you, you may be given other information like this angle and so on and then you can specifically calculate what is this. As a matter of fact you can calculate AX comma AY. Right? Uh, the reason we discuss this is because in a circular motion let's see if ca I can draw a circle properly yep in a circular motion an object is moving in such a manner that its direction is changing all the time it's constantly changing the direction it may not be changing the speed or the magnitude of the motion but the direction of this vector is changing constantly as a matter of fact if you look closely this vector is constantly falling towards the center you might have tie if you, you you can try tying a small thing with a string and try to give it a rotation and you'll see when the string gets taut you'll see that this stone which is going around in circle actually has a constant velocity it's going at the same uh, I mean constant speed that's going with the same speed but it's always changing direction well if it's changing direction then we know for sure there is an acceleration associated and 
this acceleration as you can see because this vector is falling constantly towards the center this acceleration should be pointed towards the center and this acceleration if you do a small geometrical calculation you will find is v square over r where v is the speed by which the object is moving I'm using speed because speed just tells the magnitude of the vector and r is the radius of the um, of the circle so this is the formula for the acceleration now we said a change in velocity is caused by some acceleration and this is the acceleration now acceleration is caused by a force we know that f equals ma so unless there is no force we cannot have acceleration so what is causing this acceleration this is the acceleration which is toward which is acting towards the center of the circle well we can understand that because the string is moving the mass and if you draw a free body diagram you see string always pulls so string is always pulling the stone inside and because of this we have an acceleration now what is this force called well this force which is always pulling is actually tension in the string the tension of the string is acting as the force is called the centri pital force centripetal force so in a way you can write f equals m v square over r and this is always pointed inwards just to let you know the direction inwards towards the center right and this force is provided in our case of stone tied to a string is provided by the tension in the string you may have different physical cases in which the uh, force is provided by something else for example we have earth going around sun in a circle it's also moving in a circular way and what is the force that is providing the centripetal force well it's force of gravity because sun is pulling earth towards itself there's a force and because of force there is an acceleration and this acceleration is causing this uh, causing earth to fall down towards sun constantly is falling down towards uh, this towards the sun so this is this is all of cent uh, uh, circular motion we will ever need to know in solving problems